Welcome to Tattoo Tabletop. My name is James, and today we are going to try the Harder and Steenbeck Squidmar Ultra 2024 Airbrush. Finally felt that it was time to give this a proper shot here, and uh, here you see me demonstrating the lever action and the gauge adjust. I'm not sure what that's called. That's not a great start, but here we are. So, basically, we wanted to use this specifically on the skin parts. Oh, and there's a little little feather exposed there. Let's just uh, cover that up. Okay, finger's not gonna do it. Let's just get the tweezers. Yes, perfect. We're just going to adjust those and let me show you that. All right, well, apparently we're just gonna block my shot there. That's great. So we're gonna start with Games Workshop's Talarn Sand because we're wanting to start with a darker base color and we're gonna use this dirty cup to mix it in. So that's gonna be great. Good job, James, 10 out of 10. Well, let's go ahead and get, oh my God, be careful. He's got a wide wingspan. Oh, well, anyway, here's where I first mess up. As you can see, a few drops and oh, no, too much, too much. You've gone too far. It's always good to thin your airbrush paints so that they, you know, they aren't too thick coming out of the airbrush, but when they look like dirty sand water, that is not what you really want. The reference point that most people have given and that I found has worked for me in the past, but I think I was just a little too nervous to test this out and messed up, is you're looking for milk that's just going bad so it's a little creamier, but not too creamy. Um, yeah, you're going to see how this uh, how this pans out here in a little bit. But essentially, I go back and forth trying to thicken it up some more, try and make it a much better consistency, and eventually we get to a point where we're like, all right, let's give it a shot. So first I'm going to add a little airbrush flow improver from Vallejo. I really like to use this product sometimes as a, actually a thinner for it, but most of the time I usually just put it into the airbrush right at the beginning and I will just shoot it out of the airbrush to kind of help lubricate the inside and make the uh, spray nice and smooth there so you'll see me spray it out there right on my desk and that's just my way of kind of prepping the airbrush for what's about to come even though I thin the paints please excuse me sir please move out of the way and so you'll see I'm going to test it on my hand which you should always test your paints before you start spraying your model and it's it's way too thin as you can see it's just spider webbing and at this point i have my psi set to about 25 but a lot of this definitely has to do with the thickness at which i have it but i commit to it anyway all right let's start applying the base layer that is still too thin all right let's add a little bit more paint and let's try this again all right hand test Jack. Just in case, let's let's try it on the desk. And ah, uh, very nice, nice and smooth. Okay, now we will go ahead and we will base layer. And while that's going on in the background, I will go ahead and I will tell you about the pros and cons of the brush. Pros, it is really smooth. I like the decisions that have been made with this airbrush in regards to the lever action and how it will not let you pull back and release paint unless you are pushing down. This will keep things from clogging. I'm still very new to airbrushing. I have done it, but it is something that I'm still looking to uh figure out more about I'm, I'm learning more about it and that's why i thought that this airbrush might be good for me to pick up so i was more than happy to pick this up number two i do like a lot of the design features with the gauge it really helps you control the airflow again really helps that uh so helps keep that from overspray which is huge and as you can see here once you kind of get the right consistency down it the transition and the actual spray is very nice it's very controlled i was keeping my airbrush or my compressor more or less at about 25 psi i tend to find that that works very well for me but i've heard 8 million other different ones so i'll have to try that out at some point so we start working on the underside here just doing small base layers to get up to a nice smooth base coat so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to keep adding small thin layers until we build a nice solid coat with that. Overall, I like the airbrush. It moves... Knuckles? Okay, alright. Well, anyway, like I was saying, the airbrush is very smooth. The lever action is very intuitive. It's very helpful. I appreciate it. The gauge behind that is also very helpful, having that setting. But uh, as you can see here, nice smooth base coat. Overall, thumbs up. Not bad. Wish I could do better. So much better! But we'll learn that along the way. So now we're going to transition on to the lighter highlight and allow me to emphasize 
what would be a learning condition for me. So here's one thing that I did that I'm finding as a learning method is because of that needle design at the end where it is exposed, but it is also protected with that kind of ring that makes it very accessible for anti-clogging, it was impossible for me to backfeed or backfill. I'm not sure if that's the actual term, but that's what we got here. The reason that messed with me personally, oh, shake the camera, is because I usually use that to mix the paint. So it was something I had to learn a little bit on the fly, but I wouldn't necessarily it's a, say it's a con, it's gonna be more or less a learning feature for me. So I apply this lighter, uh, this lighter color on top of the Talarn sand, which was a little bit of uh, ice yellow from Vallejo into it as well to brighten it up. But because I hadn't really shaded it down or done any sort of shade for the recesses, it just kind of looks brighter. Um, you know, that'll do for now. Today's video is sponsored by The Forge for all your hobby nerd needs. Whether it's Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Lorcana, and a plethora of board games, The Forge has what you need. The Forge has been my go-to shop and the inventory has only grown. If there's something you don't see on the shelves, fill out a product request form on their website. Thank you to The Forge for sponsoring this video. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed at this point, so I decided to switch to my Lord Celestine and I was going to try the prime feature so you maybe we just pet the brush you know tell it that we really hope that it works this time and that we're better this second time around and uh yeah so basically we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna prime you Salston prime pun intended black primer go on that so i set it to the prime function and i just start going obviously this is sped up uh decently aggressively so i usually prime using uh, a rattle can if i'm being honest uh, i'm usually painting up an entire army rattle can covers a little bit more a little bit quicker but i really wanted to test this out because i also live in minnesota which means that during the winter months it's harder to prime with a rattle can and i thought that this would be good practice so that's essentially what i did is i just put primer in here and i just started covering the entire model Again, the design is very nice. It's very useful. It felt very smooth. The paint went through very easily. Uh, obviously, minus my uh, overly thin fiasco there at the beginning, I really appreciated the features that this airbrush offers. Now to address whether or not this airbrush is good for a new airbrush user. Yes and no. In my particular experience, I have used an airbrush before. I wouldn't say I'm experienced with an airbrush as we clearly saw in the uh, previous footage there, but it has features that are very good for a new user. It's gonna really help kind of prevent them from clogging the airbrush. It's gonna do it's gonna do a lot to help move them in that direction, the lever action, the gauges. It's it's really accessible on that front. The reason it might not be as accessible is for someone like myself who has learned a lot of bad habits from my previous airbrush, like back feeding. I, it, it really messed with me, but at this point I also tried turning it off, you know, turning the gauge off, shooting the paint out that way, and that also worked really well for me, but that's also again because I had some experience using the airbrush as a primer, not much, um, but you know, it was a way for me to kind of help expedite the process a little bit. All right, we got that all primed. Let's go ahead and set them down and hey, thumbs up. Let's talk about the airbrush. What do I like about it? I love the lever action at the top. I think it's incredible. It's really like intuitive, user-friendly. Gotta give it to that. I also love the gauge of the bag controlling the paint flow. If you're a new painter, that's gonna be extremely useful, but it also has that open setting that really allows you to control how much is going out if you're an experienced painter. The paint pot was also still pretty useful. I mean, you have that open setting at the end, so that's easier to clean, but also I did have some spillage. Um, but, you know, let's chalk that up to user error, and I was very flustered. But overall review, I need some more practice with it. I am still very new to airbrushing. I think there are some very user-friendly options with this airbrush, and I think it's very good. But I just, I, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I felt a little unworthy of the brush. 
but I'll definitely have to get some practice in. I'm gonna have to definitely use this QR code and uh, hopefully up my game a little bit there. But overall, Harden Steenbeck, two thumbs up, love the airbrush. And uh, hey, we'll have to try again later. In the meantime, I've been Tattooed Tabletop. Do me a favor and uh, what's that thing? Oh, go paint something. <laughs>